doing my room scan. My equipment, pillows, drape. So my name is Brittany Langford. I'm a student with the University of South Alabama MSN dual program FNP AGACNP. Today I'm going to be performing an abdominal assessment. Jordan Langford, do you give me consent to perform an abdominal assessment on you on camera to send in to my instructor for the purposes of grading? Yes. Okay, I'm going to have you sit down right here. And while I'm having him sit, I'm going to go perform hand hygiene. Okay, sir, so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you lay back and I'm going to place this pillow underneath your head. And then I'm also going to place a pillow underneath your knees for comfort. Oh, Alright, and I'm also going to drape you for modesty. And I'm going to have you um, assist me in lowering your pants just enough um, to not, you know, show anything but get the full part of your lower abdomen down. Okay. So I'm going to drape for modesty. And I'm also going to lift your shirt up to just below the nipple line. Exposing the entire abdomen. I'm going to ask you, have you emptied your bladder recently? Yes. Okay. Are you having any pains or issues? No. No? Okay. So the first thing I do when I start my um, assessment is I'm going to inspect the abdomen. Upon inspection, I'm noticing that skin's slightly paler than the extremities, which is completely normal um, due to sun exposure. I'm not noticing any stray, any rashes, any skin discolorations, any ecmoses, any lesions. The umbilicus is centrally located and inverted. There's no signs of ascites or bulging on the sides. At eye level, I'm looking for aortic pulsations or peristalsis, and I am noti noting some um, aortic pulsations in the epigastric region. Um, I said visually no abnormalities that I have noted to the abdomen at all. I'm also going to note with the back of my hand that his abdomen is warm and dry. So following my visual inspection of the abdomen, I'm going to move on to auscultation. What I'm going to be oscillating for is going to be uh, bowel sounds. I'm going to start systematically going through each quadrant. In each quadrant, I'm going to listen to determine whether the patient has normal active, hypoactive, hyperactive, or absent bowel sounds. I'm going to listen for approximately 15 seconds in each quadrant using the diaphragm of my stethoscope. Left upper. Go slower. Right lower. So after listening to your bowel sounds in all four quadrants, I have determined that they are normal active, which means it falls between the range of five to 34 bowel sounds every minute. Normal bowel sounds consist of like a high pitch clicking and some gurgling noises. Um, if they had been hypo, which would have been less than five, that could be indicative of peritonitis. If it would have been hyper over 35, that could be an indication of a possible 
beginnings of early bowel obstruction or diarrhea. Absent bowel sounds can be indicative of an ileus. And in order to determine that bowel sounds were indeed um, absent, I would need to listen for at least two minutes, two to five minutes, um, to ensure before charting that I indeed heard no bowel sounds at all. Um, another abnormality would be if I had heard a high-pitched tinkling sound. That could be indicative of a uh, obstruction as well. But I did not hear that, and everything um, assessed with normal findings. So the next thing I'm going to do while um, auscultating the abdomen is I'm going to auscultate the blood vessels. I'm going to be using the bell of my stethoscope to do that. We're going to start out with aorta. And when I'm listening, what I'm listening for is bruise. Bruise are a turbulent sound that occur when there's a narrowing of the vessels. Um, that can mean a lot of things, but most obviously uh, indicative of arteriosclerotic disease. So we're going to listen to the aorta. It's below the xiphoid process, uh, centrally located above the umbilicus. No bruise. After assessing the aorta, I'm going to assess the right and left renal arteries, which branch directly off the aorta above the umbilicus. No bruise roted on the right. Let's listen to the left. No bruise there as well. Next, we're going to listen to the iliac arteries, which branch off the aorta below um, the level of the umbilicus. So we're going to listen to the right iliac artery. No bruise. And we're going to listen to the left. No bruise noted there as well. And then finally, we're going to listen to the femoral arteries, which is located in the crease of the thigh or the groin on each side. No bruise noted on the right. And no bruise noted on the left. So that's going to conclude my oscillating aspect of this abdominal assessment. Following this, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to percuss the abdomen. When I percuss the abdomen, I'm going to listen for two things, tympany and dullness. Tympany can indicate air, which is normal because this is the intestines. Dullness can indicate feces, food particles, underlying organs, enlarged organs, or masses. So when I do this, I'm going to take my left hand and my right dominant hand. I'm going to tap on this middle finger and assess for either sound. We're going to do the same method starting in the right upper, left upper, left lower, right lower. Okay, I did note a little bit of dullness in the left lower quadrant, like I said, but where the descending colon is, that can be indicative of feces. Um, once I do percussion on the abdomen, the next thing I want to do is I want to percuss in order to measure the liver. So what I do for that is I'm going to find the midclavicular line, and I'm going to go down past the level of the umbilicus in an area of tympany right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start palpating up until I note dullness. Once I note dullness, I'm going to mark that as the edge of the liver. Okay, I'm going to mark it. Okay, and now I'm going to come down to measure the top. I'm going to find that midclavicular line, start right below the nipple line, carefully percussing between the ribs, the intercostal spaces. Okay. I'm going to note that change. So an average liver size uh, for an adult would be anywhere between 6 and 12 centimeters. So I'm going to take my measuring tape. And this one has measured seven and three quarter centimeters. So I would chart seven and three quarter centimeters um, for the liver size. The next thing I'm going to also take for would be splenic enlargement, which can be a sign of splenomegaly. Um, normal findings would be not to hear any dullness at all. 
So that's what we're gonna we're gonna hope for tympani the entire time instead of finding dullness, which can be indicated in an enlarged um, spleen. So you're gonna find the mid axillary line go slightly posterior to that, starting at the third intercostal. We're gonna tap between the ribs. Okay, and I've reached the costal margin at this point. So I heard tympani throughout between like the seventh and eighth rib. Anywhere between the 6th and the 12th or the ninth, would be where you would hear um, splenic dullness. And that's not a finding for us. So that would be a normal finding to hear nothing but tympani there. So once I'm done percussing the abdomen, I'm going to move on to palpation of the abdomen. So when I palpate the abdomen, I'm going to start with light pressure. And I'm going to slowly do a systematic and check each quadrant. When I'm checking this quadrant, what I'm feeling for is any pain or tenderness initially with a light palpation. So you let me know if anything feels uncomfortable, okay? Okay, right upper, left upper. Okay, left lower. Okay, right lower. Okay, any pain there? Okay, so once I palpate um, lightly, I'm gonna do deep palpation next. Deep palpation, we're going to assess for a distended bladder, we're going to assess for the kidneys, we're going to assess for any masses or abnormalities inside the abdomen, okay? So with deep palpation, I'm going to take my hands with, with on top of each other and push a little bit deeper and see if I can feel anything that seems abnormal, any kind of mass, okay? And he did say he had emptied his bladder, and I'm not feeling any bladder distension. Okay. All right. So, nothing abnormal in the assessment there. I didn't feel any kind of palpable mouses, hernias, bulges, anything of the sort. So, once I get done doing that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate the liver's edge. There are different methods to do this. The hooking technique is my preferred. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the costal margin. I'm going to stick my fingers with using deep palpation. I ask the patient to take a deep breath. And when I do this, I can feel the liver's edge. The liver's edge feels smooth. It's firm. It does not feel lobular. It doesn't feel anything abnormal. So after I palpate the liver, I'm going to move over to palpating the spleen. In order to do this, I'm going to take my left hand, place it under the back side of the ribs and raise up slightly. I'm going to take my right hand and go underneath the ribs and push. So what I'm trying to feel for is the tip of the spleen. The tip of the spleen is only, let's relax your abdomen. The tip of the spleen is only palpable in about 5% of adults uh, if it's not enlarged. So I'm not feeling anything. So that would be another indicator of not having an enlarged spleen. So once I get done, two other things that I could palpate for, uh, one of them will be cholecystitis. Um, so in order to do that, one of the things that we look for would be a positive Murphy sign. So we're going to go into the right upper quadrant, wherever the patient is saying the pain is exactly. I'm going to push on it. I'm going to say, take a deep breath. Okay, the patient did not have any difficulty doing that. If I had to put the pressure and ask him to take a deep breath, it would have caused significant pain if he had had a positive Murphy sign, which is indicative of cholecystitis. The other thing that I'm going to uh, feel for, palpate for, would be uh, appendicitis. We're going to go to what's called McBurney's Point. It's located in the right lower quadrant. And this area is going to be an area of localized tenderness. So this, along with some other symptoms, is a really good indication of appendicitis. And you're not having any pain here, are you? So the last thing I'm going to do, and this is going to be, it just helps to make the assessment a little bit more smooth, is I'm going to have you sit straight up for me. And we're going to pull your shirt up in the back, exposing your back, please. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to percuss the, the kidneys. We're going to assess for pain or tenderness. We're going to do this by finding the CVA or the coastal vertebral angle, which is going to be below the 12th rib beside the transverse process of the lumbar spine. We're going to place our left hand using the ulnar side of our fist, and I'm going to uh, do like a solid thud against my hand. You're not supposed to feel any pain or tenderness, and if you do, let me know, okay? Anything? Okay. 
All right, so that concludes my assessment. I'm going to have you lay back down. And I'm going to go back through and I'm going to scan the room one more time. patient my tools thank you